Uh, I just want to talk to you about the other cause, and that is lawlessness. When you live in a corrupt country and society, you live in a society with no laws. No, or rather laws, there are laws, but only laws for the rich, laws for some people, laws for those who are connected, but generally there are no laws. It's a society of lawlessness. And this is something that you have to think through quite seriously. I think since Mahathir took over this country 23 years ago, 25 years ago, I think that's when it started. The single most significant contribution of Dr. Mahathir to this country is lawlessness. I think he has done his bit to build this country, but he has contributed to lawlessness. And unfortunately, unfortunately for us, we had a Prime Minister in the name of Abdullah Badawi who tried to do something, but he wasn't supportive. In fact, they pushed him out. He pushed, they pushed him out. He tried to do something. And this MACC and the little things that we've got today was his contribution. But unfortunately, because the present Prime Minister hasn't talked about corruption either. I mean, Occasionally he would say, uh, you know, we are going for all open tenders, <laughs> you know. But because the society and the country and the government is no transparency, do we really know what he, whether it's really implemented? You don't know. And I suspect this Prime Minister today is not committed to corruption, to elimination of corruption. And that's why I was watching this TV program last night and all the panel speakers were trying to you know, figure out how to solve this corruption problem. You know. And some people say we should have this, some people say we should have political will. But I'm sorry to say they, are, they missed the mark. There's no political will because they don't want to live in corruption. Because they drive in a corrupt system. Did you see? If you want to fight corruption, you have to change the government. That's the solution. Yeah. You cannot expect, I don't know, the whole system of patronage by which you live, you thrive on the basis of patronage, on the basis of someone giving you something. That system is itself a corrupt system. So why would they want to remove that? If you remove that, you remove the basis that the recall of the foundation of that system, of that patronage. So, when you, and that's why, I'm sorry to say, Malaysians are so tolerant of corruption. I mean, if you look at the, the scandal, the squandering, the, the billions of dollars from Karyan in 1981 to put, put to, to Baraja, 50 billion dollars, to all those who add on and add on and add, they still vote the Barisa. So if you want to fight corruption, and we know the cause, I suggest you tell Malaysians and the people of this country, there's nothing left after this. That is the only thing that will spur them. It is not moral imperatives, it's not ethical consideration, it's not the fact that it's sinful that will push them. The only thing that will push them is to tell them, to remind the people of this country, there will be nothing left after this. That will spur them. And I think we have, we meaning the Bureau and everybody else here, we have to show there will be nothing left of patronage. There will be not much left of this investment, of GLCs. They're going to sell all of that. And when we show them these numbers, I think that will put a bit of fear in the, the minds of the people. You know, when Dr. Mahathir took office, he said, I will put the fear of God in his fight with corruption. I will put the fear of God to all the civil servants, he said. But the only fear of God he ever put in was that, you don't follow me, I'll put the fear of God. <laughs> you see, when these prime ministers and leaders talk about this corruption, they don't mean it. They don't. And therefore, and therefore, 
the civil society, the RIA, the NGOs, the political uh, organization must convince the people there will be nothing left if you do not act. That is the only thing that will spread them. Final point, uh, final point is this. I sense, you know, as I've said, you know, sometimes I sense that corruption is not an issue that concerns a lot of people. But I think there are other issues that has an impact. You know, if you have a corrupt society, there are other dimensions in your life, there are other aspects in your life that be affected. So it is not just money, it is not just financial opportunity. There's a lot more things that will create havoc to the country. And I think this is why, as I said, when you have lawlessness, when you have power of the government being exercised in a way that has no regard for the feeling and dignity of people, of ordinary people, of the feeling of marginalized groups, this is what happens. This is the danger that we become more and more segregated, more and more separated. This is the cost of lawlessness. I'm sorry I have to come back to this subject. It is so important we have rules, we have principles. We must govern by a set of something that we try. We may not achieve 100%, but we must have principles and rules and laws that are fair and just. That is the only way we can keep our people together. That is the only way we can address complex issues in an intelligent way. So, but we cannot have these principles and rules and, and ethics and, and all that because if you are corrupt in, in a corrupt system, you can't. Because you're not just buying an opportunity, you're buying power, you're buying discretion, you're buying judgment, you're buying everything, it's for sale. So it's, do not see corruption as just, oh, I lost an opportunity to, to get a project or a contract but to supply me home. It's more than that. You are corrupting the system, the entire system. And I think so long as you remember that, maybe we have a chance. And maybe we can one day bring back this country to its glory. Thank you very much.